The overall price of homes in the Metro Vancouver area rose 1.3% in June compared to the month before. The benchmark price for property in the area is currently $1.2 million. The Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver says home prices increased month over month across all segments. Residential home sales rose just over 21% compared to June of last year. Well, there's a new record high in Canada among the country's skyscrapers. The amount of office space available to rent has reached new heights. According to commercial real estate services firm CBRE, there is 16.8 million square feet available across the country, an all-time high, and that is up even from this time last year. For more on the latest report from CBRE, we're joined by Paul Morasuti, chairman of CBRE Canada. Thanks so much for coming in today. Pleasure to be here. So tell us more about what you're seeing in the office space market right now in terms of that, uh, you know, space that is available for lease right sure. now. Sure. Um, you know, the news isn't very good right now. Uh, we're at almost a 30 year high in terms of vacancy in, in Canada. And um, uh, there, there, there's really been a perfect storm of issues that have hit the office sector in general. We talk a lot about remote work, but there's actually a number of other issues that have been just as, as impactful. Um, and the reality is, without question, things are bad right now. Um, the reality is things are going to get worse, but the reality is also things are going to get better. And right now, very few people are focusing on the things that are going to get better, part of the narrative, mm -hmm. but uh, it is coming and there are uh, some good aspects to what is happening in the market today. It isn't uh, entirely negative, which is the overall narrative, um, but definitely things are challenged. As I said, they're going to get worse before they get better but they will get better. Yes, yeah, some people that I've spoken with on this topic aren't that, uh, you know, yep. honest about <laughs> the situation in terms of, of, of it feeling bad. Um, but you, you're still optimistic about, you know, how this is going to evolve from here? Sure. I think the, you know, the, the, the primary narrative is that remote work or work from home represents this tectonic shift that has changed the way we occupy office space in this country not just this country, but globally. And because of that, the sector is permanently impaired. We don't buy into that, really. Remote work has had an, an impact on the market. It's going to continue to have an impact on the market. But there are, there are probably three other factors that have had cumulatively as big, if not a bigger impact than this issue of remote work. So number one, we have the recalibration of the technology sector. And the technology sector was by far the biggest driver of demand in the office world in Canada. And it is clearly on the sidelines now. It has moved from a grow at all costs sort of uh, dynamic yeah. to a focus on profitability. And it's gonna take a while for those companies to right size their footprints because they were growing so aggressively right through COVID actually. So there's the technology recalibration. There's just the general fear of a recession that has every company out there acting very prudently when it comes to expenses and expanding their, their office footprints. And then the third issue is simply new supply. We have built, um, in, Can in Toronto, we built more new product than at any time since the early 90s. In Vancouver, we added more new product than at any time in that city's history. And that new supply has hit the market at the exact wrong time. Those three issues together, in my opinion, have had a bigger impact actually than remote work, even though we are fixated on the remote work issue. And you're expecting quite a reversal in that uh, construction side of things, right? Or a slowdown. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think if you ask me why I'm optimistic about what this world might look like a few years out from now, I'd say number one, we've already worked our way through a lot of the new supply. A lot of it's been leased. There's about 5 million square feet left here in Toronto. Once we get through that, we'll be at a 20 year low in terms of new supply. That's, that's a huge factor. Um, we won't be staring down a recession forever, so that's gonna fall off the table. Interest rates next year, who knows what's gonna happen with them, but I suspect, like everyone else does, that they'll begin to moderate and come in. And this tech rebalancing that's going on now 
is not going to last forever. The tech sector will be back. It will be back even healthier than it was before. And so if those three issues fall off the table and the only issue left is this uncertainty around remote work, I think you'll find that 24 months from now, the outlook for the office sector will look dramatically different. And the other point I would make, Jacqueline, is so much of our sentiment is influenced by headlines that originate in the United States. And there are very big differences uh, between Toronto and Vancouver and San Francisco, Chicago, New York. And I think we need to keep that in mind as well. What do you think uh, the impact of you know, having to wait maybe those 24 months and having had to wait through the pandemic, um, what kind of impact that could end up having or sort of scars could it leave on uh, the, the office yeah. real estate space in the country? It's a great question. I mean, all of those things have really fed into this incredibly negative market sentiment that is exists in the market right now. And as a result, there's very little liquidity. Office buildings are not trading very much right now. Um, because of this uncertainty about what the future looks like. You know, if it takes a couple years of, of kind of a painful re uh, right sizing, will that leave lasting scars? I don't know. Um, I think what I would point out though is we talk about the sector as if it's one big sector and everything is the same. The reality is there's a portion of the office market, older, dated, uh, commoditized office buildings uh, that do not score well from an ESG point of view and perhaps never will. Mm. Those buildings, which we refer to as stranded assets, if you're an owner of that type of building, I think you're in a world of hurt for a long time. The balance of the market though is, um, Parts of it are doing extremely well. So buildings that were built after 2010, vacancy levels are pretty low, rents are, 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 um, are, are, are doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, so in terms of what happens going forward, I think we need to bear in mind that there's a portion of the market that is likely going to limp and suffer for some time. The balance of the market, I would suggest, will recover faster than people realize.